Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com, and this is the Week in Charts. I just want to thank all you guys and girls for attending. Sorry, I make it so hard to find. If you go to DaveLandry.com slash webinar, you can register, and that link should be good until the middle of 2023. All right, what are we talk about? Well, obviously, current market conditions. I'll have a plethora to say about that. Your questions on trading. Your favorite stock and crypto picks, I guess if you take out that live crypto, like it's something exciting. There's not much exciting going on in crypto unless you shorten it. I want to follow up a little bit on how to change your life and your trading. And that'll make sense in one minute if you missed it last week. And then I want to spend a lot of time tonight talking about the VIX and follow up on that. And as a general statement, tonight's kind of like a potpourri of trading knowledge. Usually I wake up on Thursdays, I guess start thinking about it on Wednesdays or earlier in the week. And usually I wake up and I have a theme for the show. And this week, it's just a bunch of stuff I want to show you and talk about. In fact, last minute, I was thinking of a few things that I forgot to put in, but I'll mention those casually. There, that was a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or I'll sum it up. All predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. So let's talk about a potpourri of trading knowledge. Now, there are times when lag is okay, and by lag, I'm talking about with a, a trading system or a trading methodology. A lot of people curve fit a system to try to get the lag out as much as possible, but lag is actually a good thing in some cases. It allows the market to breathe and do what it's going to do, and you don't end up chasing your own tail, and by allowing for a little lag, you actually especially with a longer term market timing system like this, you actually reduce some of the whipsaw. Now we did have a whipsaw signal in here, which I'll show you and I'll explain that to you. So the system simply says, if you're 10% below the 50 week closing high, and I guess I could have made that 52 weeks, but I just thought it'd be like 50 day moving average, 50 week moving average. And that's where that came from. And I just used a simple moving average for that. In fact, we'll talk about the 50 simple in just a few minutes. But you sell when the market closes below 10% of its 50-week closing high and if it's also below its 50-week moving average. Now, this is the weekly chart, obviously. And to my surprise, I know I've said this a thousand times, but I think it's worth it bears repeating. During the pandemic, when the market began to slide in earnest, we got a weekly sell signal on this system before some of the daily sell signals actually kicked in, which I thought was was really, really cool. So the whole idea, the designer's intent, me being the designer, was to A, come up with a very simple system that could work and help you time the market. And by the way, and I'm going to probably reiterate this point in a minute, but I strongly believe that some market timing is better than none. And this whole system, and I know I've, we talked a lot about this system before, but if you look at the, the spreadsheet, go back in and watch some of those older presentations. And then next week, I'll throw the spreadsheet in and do an update. But you occasionally miss these 30 and 40% and sometimes 50% or more slides. And the whole system was designed around avoiding those diaper change moments. Diaper change is a a term I stole from Ian McActivy, God rest his soul, wonderful guy. Anyway, so that's the whole designer's intent for the system. Now, we did have a buy back here that one of you guys pointed out, and, and another one of you guys was like, well, how come you didn't take that? It's like, well, first of all, I wasn't watching this close enough to realize we had a buy. And the reason I wasn't watching it close enough was you have to really squint your eyes and zoom in on a chart and see that that low for that week was actually above the 50 week moving average. You need two, by the way, the upside to buy is you need two bars of upside Landry light using the 50 week moving average. And it also has to be within 10% of its 50 week closing high. In other words, above that green line that I have in here. But anyway, it, it the market had already came back in. So I knew the market was getting stronger. I knew we were within 10% of the all-time highs, I think it was like 7% or, or maybe 4 or 
but I didn't think we were we had the Landry light there, the 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 lows greater than the moving average. And if you squint your eyes, you can't see it on this chart, but if you thin down the moving average and you really squint your eyes and zoom in, yeah, that low was actually above the 50 week moving average. Now, I don't know if it was on the spiders, and we can look at that if we have some time later tonight. But anyway, let's say you took the signal like one of you guys did. Well, that's okay. That's a whipsaw. And I think that was about a, a three or 4% loss if you took that whipsaw. It wasn't too bad because within a couple of weeks, as you can see here, you got a sell signal when it closed back below that 10% line. The buy line is what I call that. And you could see the thing I wanted to point out about lag is one thing about this system is it does have a lot of lag to it if you have like a V-shaped recovery like we had in the pandemic because your, your buy line is way up here, the market spikes down. And for instance, in this case here, we have 35 weeks since that closing high, which was late in 2022 market ended on a high note, right? Now, after 50 weeks, this green line is going to start coming down. But right now, the, the buy line is actually below the 50-week moving average. But you can see the 50-week moving average has turned down and is starting to catch up with price. I kind of noodled with this quite a bit. And I think I'm going to leave the system as it is. And I think that in some cases, lag is good and it's going to keep you from from getting into a market prematurely now we have been buying stocks lately not not very much lately but during that last run from lows which we'll look at a daily chart in one minute we have been buying stocks because that there there were some speculative stocks that set up and look really good and so we took them some of them worked and some of them didn't. The ones in crypto worked for a little while, at least, at least one did. Anyway, so it depends on how you wanna look at that buy line, but the parameters, if you squint your eyes up top, or 90-50. So that means I wanna draw a line that's 90% of the 50-week closing high. That's it. So basically, my thinking is, if a market's gonna lose half of its value, it's gonna lose 10% first. So we've got the moving average in there to kind of smooth it out a little bit, actually adds a little bit of lag to it, as opposed to just buying and selling above and below the buy line. And it does help, and help being a keyword in that sentence to avoid whipsaw. But yeah, in this one particular case right here, again, that was a whipsaw signal. It happens, I'm okay with a 4% loss. I think that's what it was with a system like this, as long as it gets me out of trouble. And so far, and I forget how many years ago I published this, it's, it's been a few, and, and the years go by so damn fast now, it's hard to remember. But going back throughout history, and, and you know, all predictions are about the future, a lot of stuff could have between now and then, but this has gotten you out of every bear market in history right before it's gotten really, 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 really ugly. It would have gotten you out, I think, the Friday before the crash, in October, obviously it would have gotten you out right as the Great Depression began, and it would have also gotten you out of the bear market of 2000 and the bear market of 2007, 2008. All right, any questions on the TFM 10% system? I know we talk about it quite a lot, but if you're new to, new to it, you may have some questions. What I would recommend you do is watch the quick clips on YouTube. I think I have a few of them out there. If you don't, if you're not a member of my site, and I think that there is a free market timing course, and I'll check on the sign up for that if you want to take a look at that too. All right, let's talk about trading the VIX and off of the VIX. Just by background, real quick, and I know everybody here tonight knows this, but many years ago, I worked with Larry Connors, did some research and programming for him. And he loved the fact that 
I knew both markets and understood programming. And it was kind of cool because Larry would had some big picture ideas and I was able to kind of noodle with him in some cases and take the ball and run with it. And one thing that he taught me about the VIX was that it's a reversion to the mean kind of market. So I decided to take some of his research that he was doing on the VIX and then add a moving average to it because a mean is a moving average. It's the same thing, right? And statistically, a moving average is known as the mean or average, okay? Anyway, I've gone through this chart quite a bit, so let me just zip through it real quick. I have the S&P 500 in the background for reference. This is yesterday's chart. And there's a 10 simple moving average. The VIX obviously plotted, plotted in yellow. And this little indicator at the bottom just tells me how far away the market is from its 10-day simple moving average. The purple is the open and the cyan is the close. Actually, yeah, that's right. The purple is the open and the cyan is the close. And that's in case there's like an intraday relationship where let's say the VIX gaps way, way higher and then starts coming back in. That is a potential, would that be a buy signal? Yeah, that would be a buy signal. And I'll flesh out a few of these things and show you a trade in just one minute. So if you were to broadcast the open down, that's the open, and then that's the close right there. And let's see, let's just double check this. Okay, yeah, right here, if you see, here's the formula right here. So we're looking at yesterday's moving average. So today's moving average is not part of that formula to avoid any moving target type of things. And then down here, this is just a range based on the high minus low because let's say you come in and, and what I'm showing you or suggesting with the VIX and, and trading off the VIX is you trade it intraday, okay? as opposed to interday over several days. Now, the original systems Larry did were short-term timing systems. And my only problem with short-term timing systems is they kind of occasionally blow up and they don't make enough to cover the blow-ups. Now, we have drawdowns, as you know, with the core methodology, which I publish every night in my trading service, but the occasional home run and taking those swing trade profits helps to smooth out that equity curve. As I said quite a bit when I'm talking about this VIX stuff, I went in and looked at it and I was amazed at how well it worked until I hit the pandemic going back in time and it kind of blew up a little bit then, it, back then. It, it printed money, these short-term systems, meaning that you're holding several days to maybe a week based on these signals, printed money, but that's the problem that something like this is it can occasionally blow up because there are some outliers here and there. So I don't know if you can read this in your screen. There's the formula. Everything I do is fully disclosed and I uh, have a members resources section on my website. If you're a gold member or a service member, you can go in and access that. If you're not, I'm willing to share all this stuff. Now, the VIX can do two things. It can revert back to the mean, which it will eventually do, or the mean can come up to meet it, okay? And when that happens, it becomes normalized, so to speak, okay? The new normal. And many, many years ago, before I met Larry, I read about his VIX system where you were buying and selling above and below 15. Well, we haven't seen a 15 VIX in a long, long, long time. In fact, nowadays it seems like anything less than 20 is just way too low. And that's why the moving averages came into play and those in, in indicators like that, that don't focus on fixed price levels because markets change, okay? So, the mean can come up and then 27 or 28 or 29 or 30 or whatever could be the new normal in the VIX, at least while we're still in this apparent bear market phase. 
Now, a couple of things to know. Asymmetry is to the upside, explosion of the VIX versus implosion. So if you go back to, I think this was around the pandemic, I just went back and found a wide range bar. Notice that the VIX really shot up. Well, when the market implodes, as you can see in the background, okay, the market imploded right here, a huge drop in the P's, right? Well, the VIX shoots up because this is panic in the market. Now, the VIX, by the way, is measuring a 100-day hypothetical um, options. I'm, I forget the exact time period. It might just be a 30-day, but it's like a rolling 30-day. It's a crazy, crazy derivative, and the formula is about that big. But you don't have to worry about that. It's kind of like you don't have to understand thermodynamics to understand if it's cold outside or hot outside. You could walk outside, or you could look at a thermometer. Anyways, anyway, you could see that it shot higher based on this slide in the S&P 500. And then it can implode to the downside, but usually the, the trade has an asymmetric reward to the upside when it takes off like it does. Now, we have the little range indicator down below. Simple, simple, simple indicator. There it is right there, okay? And you can see that based on that on that day measuring the uh, the low to high, the intraday range, it was 600% of what it normally is. So if you were able to hop on that VIX at some point during the day and hold on, uh, lots of ifs and ands in that sentence, you could have absolutely printed some money. And that's that's what we live for if we're going to trade the VIX on an intraday basis. Now, of course, you can also use it for a signal. And I'm going to kind of touch upon that signal to actually trade intraday. And I felt like today I did a little bit of bottom fishing in SoxL and LabU. And then I did buy some SVXY. And I'll show you that trade in one second. And of course, I did a little e mini trading because the VIX was stretched and the market was so oversold and due to bounce. Now, I didn't take any of that home. Oh, correction. I have a tiny piece with a trailing stop that should stop out probably while I'm in this webinar. But other than that, I, I closed down everything because this is just a signal I want to use intraday to kind of put a little, a little wind at my back when I'm coming in on these intraday trades. Now, this isn't my bread and butter. But on a day like today where my position stuff isn't doing fantastic and this intraday stuff is setting up, I can go in and get a little bit of a piece. Now, as I said earlier, I'd much rather buy the VIX than buy the SVXY, which is short the VIX, okay? But I saw that reversion to the mean move began to unfold a little bit. And I was right, but a little early, which is the same as being wrong, but I had a fairly medium stop on this and you'll see what i did so there's the actual trades i only only put on a couple hundred shares and this is a a smaller account and it's probably i guess if you add it up 10 percent total of the account 10 percent of margin on the account and i bought those at 52 15 and flipped them out market on close now i was anticipating the mother of all turns and it was only 200 shares and it was only a half a point now i did do it in more than one account so it does kind of i know it adds up you can't get a little bit pregnant but with something like the vix and i'm looking for that reversion to the mean it's like all the panic is sort of in the market and that's when the vix gets stretched and when that market rallies that panic comes out of the market the implied volatility which the vix is measuring begins to implode a little bit. And that's why I thought it was worth a shot going into bottom fish. And I said, well, Dave, where would you be wrong? Where do you want to stop out? It's like, well, I don't want to stop out. But I figured if it goes to old lows, I'm wrong. Okay, so my risks are fairly well defined. And then maybe give it a little bit of wiggle room from there. So I went with a half a point stop, which is not shown because it's below the market. Now, a safer entry would have been right there. In hindsight, I should have done 
maybe should have put an add on at that level, or I could have just waited for a more solid signal to get in. So truth be told, I did kind of take a stab at this and I did try to bottom fish. Now, but Dave, I thought you were not a re reversion to the mean player. Well, the VIX is a reversion to the mean kind of market. It's not a trending market. And I'm going to flesh that out in just one second. So when it's stretched and you see it start to, that rubber band is stretched and you see it begin to snap back and you see the overall market turning and then Lab D's taken off and Lab U's taken off and then uh, I think JDUS took off. I don't know if that really tells you anything about market timing, but most of the ETFs were headed higher. So I figured it was worth a stab and worst case scenario, I just lose a hundred bucks. I know a hundred bucks is $25,000 a day. If you lose a hundred bucks a day, so you got to be careful with that game, but I also kind of wanted to have a trade to show you tonight after putting together all that big stuff. But anyway, you can see that I put in an automated trailing stop and this isn't exactly the scale, but it sort of looks something like this. Now, normally what I would do, and I did this with LabU and SoxL today and, and what else did I do? I think that's that's it. But normally what I would do is I would take partial profits along the way. And let's say I'm looking for a point in a trade and I have a one point trailing stop. Well, as soon as I'm up a point intraday, I'll take off half of the shares just in case the market reverses. And today I found myself feeling a little greedy, reaching for my calculator on some other trades. And I'm like, Dave, you know, don't try to ride out that full love. Go ahead and take those partial profits. By the way, you reach for your calculator, reach for your mouse to do some selling. <laughs> Whenever you start feeling good about markets, things uh, change really quick, really quickly. Anyway, so actually the remainder market on close, as you saw in the uh, trades. In fact, let's back that up. And I forget exactly how much that was. What's that? Little over a point, so a couple hundred dollars and change. Better than the poking in the eye. I mean, if you did that every day, I know my wife's like, what's that thing you do? Like annualizing. It's fifty something thousand dollars a year. I mean, better than a poking in the eye, right? Anybody know what the, what's the median income in the United States? Probably fifty grand or something. It's not that much, is it? Now keep in mind that it only matters when it matters. And Things can get stretched for a long, long time. Now, I did go in and take a stab, but I've been watching this market get oversold, 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 and I really felt like it was due to come back. And I was still a little early, as you saw. And again, I think it would have been better if I would have waited for just a little bit more confirmation. But a lot of relationships in the market only matter when they matter. You can't take anything as as concrete and if this always this it's like well if this then watch for that okay so if the vix is stretched to the upside means there's a lot of panic in the market when the market begins begins to rally that stress comes off and the implied volatilities begin to implode the implied volatilities for those who don't know how am i going to explain this is what is what the traders are implying the volatility of the market of the options are, okay? And when that gets super, super, super high, it's really hard for that option to pay off. Now, you don't wanna sell that option unless you're covered because as I said recently, and I saw one of you guys pointed out that Dave Keller retweeted it, which makes me feel wonderful, <laughs> is it's always darkest right before it gets more dark. So that's where you gotta be careful with this type of stuff. So don't be a hero. Yeah, I kind of went in a little early this morning, but I figured that if it didn't work, I could sweep it under the rug. But again, you know, a lot of sweeping. If you did that every day before you know it, 50,000, 100,000 a year or more and sweep it. So you got to be careful. You do want to wait for some kind of turn. Like I just said, biotech was rallying. The semiconductors were rallying. The SVXY was beginning to rally. The market was rallying. It just kind of felt like a low was in, but the market did a little retracing. And remember, the market's going to do what it has to do to fool the most amount of people 
and it's going to do what it has to do to punish the most amount of people. So I was willing to ride it out to the old lows plus a little bit just in case the market decided to, decided to try to punish me. And fortunately, the stop was just loose enough to be able to ride that out. But do wait for the turn and wait for a lot of signs and signals, like I just said. It happens. So intraday is the way to play. Like I just said, that my VIX stuff, every now and then I'll dust it off like I am now. But now I'm using it for an intraday turns, okay? Like I said, the VIX is really, really stretched. I've been getting beat up a little bit in my core positions. And I know the overall market's getting ready to turn. Then maybe I can go in and do some VIX trading and maybe use that again to help me have a little wind at my back with some of the other stuff. But the, the intraday is the way to, I think, to play this stuff. Back in the day, I would hold swing trades and S&P futures and things like that, but it's just not worth it. In, unless you are doing intraday trade and you got a tight trailing stop on the remainder like I have. I think I have a 10 point trailing stop. I'm kind of shocked I hadn't got stopped out yet. Oh, it's close. <laughs> But if it does, it does. Now, if it take if it happens to take off, then maybe I'll open that up to 15 or 20 points or whatever, or maybe even 30 points if it really takes off, and try to ride it overnight. But I'm not going to get in and say I'm going to hold this position for three days because you could end up with a position, uh, a system that doesn't make enough to pay for the occasional spanking. That's the secret of trading. Make sure you tr make sure your system. Makes enough to pay for the occasional spanking. Write that down. Now, I touched upon this in weeks prior, but I want to explain it one more time. The VIX is not a price chart. People will, will show cup and handles and bow ties and, uh, and any other pattern in, in the VIX, and you're not measuring, you're not measuring human psychology. You're measuring volatility, which is a completely different animal so keep in mind that it reflects the implied volatility not the price action itself so anybody shows you a cup and handle in the vix or some sort of head and shoulders top or whatever that's pretty much meaningless unless of course you've got some sort of stretched away from the moving average situation and that resolves itself and then it makes it look like that pattern actually worked there's a lot of things that people get wrong it's, it's some 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 people will apply technical analysis that that to non-tradable markets that have nothing to do with with uh but I digress. <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble if I do that. Now keep in mind all this stuff is complicated. And to add to the complication is VIX ETFs are based on futures. And that's why I wouldn't hold them for more than a day. If you think about it. The futures, you've got contango. I think that's how you say that. I've never actually said the word, but there's a decay with the futures, and it makes it makes things really complicated if you're trying to hold these things more than a day. Now I've talked about this quite a bit. It reverts back to its mean. Stretch can always become more stretched. Make sure you have a signal. Again, intraday trading is the way to go. And then that little range indicator I have on the bottom, wait until that range begins to expand a little bit before jumping in. Uh, this morning, I was kind of bottom fishing on that. And again, it's a reversion to the mean market and the market was really oversold and I saw all these turns happening. And I still was a little early, okay? Ripe and early, which is same thing, Michael implied from the, from the big short. That's the same thing, Michael. <laughs> Good show, by the way. Uh, watch out on inside days unless the range for the prior day is pretty big. And again, that percent of range can really help you. So if the VIX is at a really tiny, narrow range, it's not reverting to that mean, at least not just yet. And then again, you know, look for some signals and maybe a few other things that, that are happening too, like the futures to be turning and et cetera. Now, less is more, this is a money lying in the corner type of trade where you might have to wait a long time before hopping in on the VIX. I'm very, very, very hesitant to buy the VIX. 
very hesitant to buy the SVXY like I did today, but I figured, okay, looks like everything's kind of aligning here. It's worth a shot. I'm probably a little too much of a bull on the UVXY, the upvix, leverage VIX, when I think things are a little iffy because if the market begins to implode, that thing's going to skyrocket like you saw earlier. All right, any questions on the VIX? I know everybody here is probably rolling their eyes. Dave's talking about the VIX again. <laughs> All right, good. Now, is the 50 day moving average really that great? And I don't know if it's because I've been part of stockcharts.com, I guess a couple of years now. Jeez, wow, time time flies. And I do a show for them, Trading Simplified, as you likely know. You can find it on my website, davelander.com. But I don't know if it's because I'm involved with a lot of those guys over there and girls, but it seems like everybody seems obsessed with the 50-day moving average. So I thought it would be a good idea to take a look at the 50. Now, my favorite thing to do with a moving average is to put the daylights in there or as I now call it, Landry Light, thanks to one of you guys. I said, I got to put my name on this stuff. <laughs> we'll call it Landry Light. Brilliant. Done. <laughs> Daylight comes from an article I wrote in 1995 on this moving average phenomenon. And oh, phenomena, phenomenon. And somebody emailed me and, and actually called me too. And, and um, he called it Daylight because you can see the light between the lows and moving average. But I call it Landry Light now. Anyway, you can see land on the bottom. This does not measure the magnitude. I've tricked up so many people on the back end of my website in the course on this, that the course on trend following that I almost changed the answers, but I'm like, nope, I want everybody to get it. It just counts the number of days. So you can see there were probably about 90 days or 100 days of Landry light coming into the pandemic slide. And that's based on the 50 simple moving average. Green is good, Tarzan speak, green good. And red is bad, Tarzan speak, red bad. Now, what you might want to do is you can see I've got these little parameters in here, these little dotted lines at plus and minus 10. And if you're using ACP, you could set those lines. It's also available actually for free in Metastock. And uh, someone in our group, I don't know if they're still a member or not, but they did the coding for for trading view. And uh there was a few issues with it. I don't know if they they improved it or not, but uh well, it just got stopped out. Okay. You know oh, what? It happens, right? Good. Now I can close out my day. That's fantastic. <laughs> anyway, so let's take a look at getting back to Landry Light. You can see the pandemic slide. Notice that it began to implode and we had lots and lots and lots of land you like. Now, one thing you might do to avoid getting whipsaw too much is say, okay, I'm gonna pay attention to that 50 day moving average. By the way, I like the 30 EMA the best. That's my favorite when it comes to land light, but the 50 is well watched. And I only dust off the 50 when the market gets a little iffy. I think it's worth watching. But anyway, you can see, let's say you get out after 10 downside, 10 bars of downside Landry light, that would have kept you out of a pretty serious slide. And then notice, and I'm just kind of noticing myself here, that we had very, very little red, only a few bars here and there. And that's what I'm just noticing. It was much less than 10 days of Landry light. So enough to get concerned about but not enough to sell the form maybe have it appraised okay but you can see for the most part as long as you're green tarzan speak green good i did a lot of presentations where tarzan drops in <laughs> that's also what my wife describes me speaking italian <laughs> he speaks italian like tarzan <laughs> manja <laughs> chibo <laughs> anyway you can see a little red here Nothing really materialized from that, but enough to make you concerned. Went back to being green. Looks like all is well in the world. But also notice, you've got to look at a few things too. Notice that we kind of just made this marginal new high and you were kind of losing a little steam. If you were to draw a longer term line, 
across the highs. You notice it would kind of be rolling over right around here. Now, I wouldn't trade directly off of something like that, but that plus you begin to seeing a little red Landry light and, of course, the sell signals in like the TFM 10% system, then you need to get out of the way. Now, you can see we were mostly red in here. We had a little green back when the market was improving. And I got those adages from Linda Rasky, and she said she probably got them off the floor. She didn't. She's very modest. She didn't know where she got them. But the market will often do the obvious and the unobvious manner, okay? It was pretty obvious to me that the market was going to reverse. But what happened today, at least? What happened? It had a lot of fits and starts. And it was hard for me to to stay the course. In fact, I actually at one point walked out of the office a couple of times and let everything play itself out as opposed to watching those flickering ticks. But notice that the market rallied up just enough to make everybody think, come on in, the water's fine. And those people, such as some of my friends, and unfortunately still family, and it's like as many presentations, I guess they don't bother watching my presentations. <laughs> That's why a couple of years back or whenever it was, when the market was, was it last April, last August? Or maybe the August before I did a presentation. The market's at all-time highs. I'm like, all right, let's do a before the, before the bomb blows up presentation. Because nobody calls me when the market's making new highs. People call me when they're down 30 or 40% in a bit of a panic. But those buying hope people were breathing a collective sigh of relief. Now, Here's the thing that I always like to come back to. These aren't just magical little squiggles on the charts. Now, I know I've got a couple of indicators in here, but I, I call indicators, at least the ones I use, illustrators, because it just illustrates what's already in the chart itself. But all those little squiggles, and I know everybody here knows this, your eyes are glazing over again, but <laughs> that's buying and selling by people. And you need to think about the psychology of those people. I mean, right here, these people are in a bit of a panic, okay? because they're seeing their their life savings evaporate, unfortunately, okay? I don't want to see anybody get hurt. That's why I do all these presentations. A lot of them are for free. And I give away a lot of stuff, like the TFM 10% system, that'll keep you out of trouble. No guarantees, you know, or your money back. What's well, a free system? So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But the market rallied just enough to make everybody feel like, okay, everything is fine. I, I'm down. I'm down a half a million here. Oh, I'm only down a hundred thousand here. Maybe everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be all right. I'm back on track with retirement. And then, you know, I don't want to take, I don't want to get in trouble here, but these people who sell financial planning, not all of them, I'm sure. I'm sure there's some people that are okay out there, but a lot of them drink the Kool-Aid of buy and hope. And they just say, oh, uh, just hang on. It'll always come back. Well, always might be 25 years. And people don't believe me on when people don't believe me on that plot of charts. And uh, what was it? The S&P had 13-year lows in 2008. Okay. So like I said, in the layman's guide to trading stocks, if you started saving when your kid was a toddler, 13 years later, you could have less money than what you started with if you put that money in the market, which they all tell you to do. Now, I'm beginning to digress here, but the whole point is that we rallied just enough to make everybody feel good. Market rolls back over. And then I guess you could argue the last rally was just enough to make people feel good again. I don't know. Oh, I know what I want to say. What pisses me off about these guys, I said I wasn't going to do it. I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> Is. when the market gave me the first sell signal the tfm system was probably back here somewhere i told a buddy of mine to you might want to talk to your guy and he says i did and i was like well what did he say he goes we're getting more aggressive now the market has dropped i'm like okay well that'll work until it don't okay <laughs> anyway if we zoom in you can see we just have one day below the 50 uh yeah this is today's chart so not enough to get too excited about if you're using the 50th timing but obviously we've been in a bit of a slide as of late don't sit around and wait for a moving average or something to make a decision just look at the charts and say okay what's going on here but it does give you a good point of reference and it is a well-watched area 
And you can see down here, the count is one, okay? All right, anybody have any questions on the 50 or thoughts or comments? If you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment below. I read and answer all comments. <laughs> yeah, even the nasty ones. I, a few years back, I get on all these little kicks every now and then. And sometimes things stick, like the morning pages, which I'll talk about in a minute. And sometimes they don't. But I think it's it's good to throw, what's he saying, throw a little spaghetti against the wall, see what sticks. And mind mapping was something that's really cool. But the problem with that was I upgraded the computer that the program was on. And then the company, I couldn't find the company to, to get an upgrade so I could put it on my new computers. And I didn't want to go through the hassle of, of ripping out a hard drive and trying to mirror it and all that other BS. So I just kind of let it go by the wayside as a computer sat on the floor in my office. Anyway, I finally, through my morning pages, just random thoughts. I'm like, what about mind mapping? And, and let's see if I could find that company again and find the upgrade. And I couldn't find the company, but it had been bought out by another company. And they made me a good deal on the software. So I said, the heck with it. I'll go ahead and, and go with it. So I just threw this together real quick. This is nowhere nearly done, but I've forgotten how valuable the mind mapping can be. And I need to read a little bit more about it. I just said, okay, you just make a branch and add branches to it. But the good thing is you could see, you could see everything in front of you. And what I'm gonna to try to do, and I did the first couple of days after I started this and I haven't done it since, but I'm gonna to try to keep this up on a separate monitor during the day, this and other mind maps like this, so I could see what's going on. So the core methodology is the bread and butter. I have the Landry list I publish every night in my trading service. One thing I'm not good of, about doing, because sometimes I get caught up in all this stuff down here, which can pay off really big, but I can't lose sight of where the money is. I gotta, also keep my eyes on the prize, right? So I want to load my Landry list to where I can see it during the day to see what's happening in it into, into a separate data feed. And then maybe set some alerts or orders for my official recommendation. Now, the IPO is every day at 2.30. I need to make sure my alarm is set for that. That's when I do my IPO analysis. And lately I can't find an IPO set up to save my life. And John Ross, who's a resident expert in the Facebook group, said the same thing last week. So it made me feel pretty good because I know he's looking at that stuff pretty hard. When IPOs work, they are wonderful. I just got a testimonial from somebody. I didn't ask them to use it, but it, he told me that he's made more money with the buy it be than anything else ever anything else he's ever learned about trading, which made me feel really good. And I think that's what he said, but don't quote me on that. And I'll see if I can get permission from him. But I'll do my late day analysis. And I'm just looking for IPOs that are in the early phases of taking off. And I ran out of time tonight. I had so much I wanted to cover with this potpourri of trading. But one thing I've noticed, I had, I captured three or four charts and we could, we could take a look at them when we get to the live charts. A lot of these IPOs have just imploded from day one. And my rule is you can't buy them into the lease until the close of day five. Now, you do notice here, I do have a day five front run in here. Now, the day five front run is let's say you've got a short list of IPOs you're watching on day five. And you see one begin to take off and it looks like it's just going to blow through where you would enter by the close and you might look to get in and, and let's say it makes a big fat opening gap reversal that's a little bit more advanced when it comes to the ipo stuff but i think i'm on to something there because you might get a head start and sometimes sometimes i'm a late day analysis if around 2 30 and i'm on central time 30 minutes before the close. If I see something that looks really good, 
I might front run it, so to speak, instead of waiting for it to close at new highs. If it looks like it's going to close at new highs and it's really blowing and going, I might hop in. And sometimes I'll get a point or two head start on that IPO. So a couple things there. And then also load the IPOs. I try to do that every few days to make sure I don't miss anything. And I also, you see up here, I have double check with Finvis. You could also do the same thing with stockcharts.com. And it's a little, it's kind of the same thing I do with Telechart to show the IPOs. They, there's a little thing you could set to show the last so many days of stocks and and they took that based on my recommendation and made that an IPO scan. So if you poke around on stock charts, you could also find IPOs. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing, I use a plethora of tools and a lot of the stuff I'm doing can be recreated in other packages. I'm not splitting the atom. And a lot of the stuff was before I was with stock charts and, and they're incorporating more and more of my stuff into their platform, which I'm very grateful for. But right now I'm just double checking these on Finviz. I think it's candle glance charts on stock charts. You can do the same thing. And I'll just go through those to make sure I'm not missing anything. Crypto, I haven't been very active in crypto lately. In fact, I need to make sure that I'm flat. <laughs> I do have some some Bitcoin hodled, which is embarrassing to admit, but I've got a little bit. I think everybody should own a little tiny, tiny bit of Bitcoin. Keep in mind that all asset classes will lose half of the value in your lifetime. So anything you decide to hodl, just realize it's going to lose half of its value at some point in your lifetime. But in the crypto, I used to do the RS scans. I still do them. I just haven't taken action lately. The RS scans last fall just absolutely printed money and now not so much because crypto is out of favor. And then there's a, a new shitcoin, S-H-Y-T, that comes up. So Jeff, was it you that sent me the email? Jeff says, buy a D, my best method to date. Yeah, I, thank you, man. You, you, made my, uh, you made my day. And that's, um, that's one of my favorite things, too. And it, 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 takes, it takes, oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, I would love to use that uh, as a testimony. That'd be great. It, it It's amazing how something so simple could work. Basically, you're just buying on a new closing high with a few caveats. And it does take a leap. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. It does take a leap of faith because you're buying and you're like, okay, what I do in the market close? Especially like on a Friday. And sometimes those are the best. But often they'll work out nicely and are nice enough to make it worthwhile, as Jeff pointed out. And I know John trades a lot of them too. But sometimes like an after hours trading, if I'm up a few points, even if it's not quite the initial profit target, I won't let that gift force in the mouth and I'll go ahead and take those partial profits. Now the intraday trading, I need to, to, to work on noodle with a lot of this. And each one of these things can be broken down into many, many, many more branches. So this is like a first draft here. But I need to work more and more on less is more. And I'm getting better at that. And just like I got that little range indicator with the VIX that I showed you earlier, I have the same exact thing programmed in and watch it during the day. So like if I see a big fat bar in Sox L or Sox S or Lab U or Lab D or whatever the case may be, gush, drip, and I get all excited and I look at that range indicator, unless it's an opening gap, okay? But I look at that range indicator, it's like at 20% or 10% or 15%, meaning that it's only 15% of its last two weeks range intraday. Then I'll sit on my hands a little bit. So I'm working to do less and less and less intraday trading and then more and more of that money lying in the corner trade. I wouldn't say that today was money lying in the corner, but today everything began to line up because the market was so oversold and due to to bounce and it really didn't bounce that much to my surprise. At the end of the day, I thought, man, this thing looked like it went straight up. But I think um I know I think the indices were in the minus column by the end of the day. We'll look at that in one second. I know the Russell was down a percent, and I think the other two didn't do so great either, but they were well off their worst level. Anyway, Russian dolls, we've talked about that before, is where you have a, a swing trade set up and you go in for a little piece in a day trade. I know I've known some very successful day traders at least years ago 
they would look at weekly charts, monthly charts, daily charts, and then they'd go in and it'd be in, in and out within 30 minutes or something. They would put the wind at their backs and all that stuff. Anyway, little momentum stuff. It like for instance, I got like a momentum list. I might if conditions are great, I'll run a, a, a RS scan intraday to see what's moving in my momentum list. I'll do the same exact thing in Landry list. As I said before, I had a client that two or three times, at least twice that I know of, he just had a little like app from CNBC or something, and he would take the Landry list. Now, keep in mind, the market was blowing and going. It will not work right now, okay? I, I promise you it won't. But he would always stay in the top two or three stocks in the Landry list all day long, and that's all he did was he'd punch it in his phones, walk in between appointments and stuff, and and he did really well. He 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 told me that he made enough to for two down payments on on two separate investment properties. So relative strength trading, meaning buying whatever's strong during the day, will absolutely print money when the market is blowing and going. Let me give you a hint right now. The market is not blowing and going right now, okay? Draw your lines, draw your arrows, hide your kids, hide your wife. <laughs> it's been headed lower as of late. Okay, last week I talked about how to change your life for free. Well, it might cost you a notebook and an ink pen. By the way, I used to go through, seems like I'd buy a pack of refills once every four or five weeks. I would, I would use so many uh, pens. Anyway, how to change your trading in your life for free. I talked about that last week and basically you just wake up early and write three handwritten pages and that's it and you're going to be shocked at what comes from it and several of you have been asking me for examples and i grabbed this example and this one's a little sloppy but my my handwriting has gotten a lot better and it's something i've been working on because i'm working on a book and a lot of, a lot of that writing for that book comes out just naturally in the morning and uh in fact when i take my time like there was one night i was i was rewriting something and my daughter asked me what font i was using and she didn't realize i was writing by hand so my writing's got a little better but just stupid things like um you know ote buck week we'll try to write quickly and clearly i must have been in a hurry on this day and then i just talk about my handwriting up here and then i talked about the fact that i was having a good day a good week trading I need to look at why it was decent. Was the volatility there? Okay, so I'm doing a lot of I'm doing a lot of introspection here. Like, why did I make money on this particular week? So I need to go back and look at April 1st. Someday when I reread these notes, I need to do that. I probably should have done it much earlier on. You know, and then I had to, you know, it's like a little self talk here. Have you just made money and have some to throw around? So you got to be careful. And then I said, note that the problem here is sometimes when conditions are conducive, pressing a little can work, okay? So if the market is really just going in one direction on a route, sometimes you can take off shares and then put some back on or maybe put on some other ETF that's moving. You got to be careful, though, because you don't want to pyramid and pile in too much. And then shits and giggles trades could also work, of course. Piss away some or possibly all of your recent acquired capital. So just basically, I'm telling myself to be careful here. And then I then I actually this kind of launched me into some writing where I talk about the fact that the money has to become become yours. Okay, so here's a here's a great little little psychology lesson that comes from this. And you know what? I'll give you a prime example. Yesterday, I made good money early on. I caught a trend in gush and I did it across multiple accounts. And I'm like, Dave, you need to quit. You made it, you had a good day, just you know, call it in. And I felt like I could do more. Okay. And had I let myself get used to having that money for a couple of hours, I would have been less inclined to fritter it away. So there's a prime example right there. And so my point, and I went into a lot of writing on this, this kind of started a bunch of writing where I talked about how, how the money has to become yours. And I talk about lottery winners. And the best thing to do if you win the lottery, I mean, other than, than obvious, some obvious things like, of course, pay your bills, pay off some debts. But the best thing you could do is sit on that money for six months. 
anytime you you have some found money or something comes along. So the same thing goes in trading. It can be easy come, easy go. <laughs> so you got to be really, really careful with that. But anyway, not to digress too far, this is kind of like, this is what a morning page would look like. Usually I write a lot smaller and I must have been in a hurry on this particular day for whatever reason. Usually I write why, why I'm in a hurry and what's going on. All right, let's hop into crypto real quick. I, I doubt there's anything there. Of course, we'll take a look at Bitcoin. If there's anything you want to look at, let me know. Any questions, anything thus far? Okay. Now, earlier I said RS starts. And if you go in and watch presentations from last fall, absolutely printing money doing this. Of course, I wish I'd have pressed more than I did, but I was having so much fun with a relatively small account running it up. And I was thinking, uh, I guess I was thinking a little bit of that permanent income hypothesis. This is going to go on forever. This is going to be fantastic. And all I was doing back then is I would come in and see what's strong and buy it. And, you know, like right now, this looks pretty good. Okay. That's, that's the type of stuff I would buy, buy stuff that's going straight up. But we're not in that kind of market right now with crypto. But if you have tons and tons of pairs that are going straight up, that's kind of interesting. That kind of looks like a, that kind of looks like a, a, buy, a buy a D type of IPO thing there, but Doge chain, don't know what that is. I don't know what any of this shit is. <laughs> yeah, you ever listen to somebody try to explain it? Like, oh, okay. <laughs> but you can see it's kind of waking up a little bit. And again, I haven't been paying much attention to it lately. And that's one, one reason to put it in a mind map is I need to pay attention to it, especially when I don't feel like paying attention to it. And because of when I'm busy with everything else, but there are a few in here beginning to wake up. As I've said, a nausea in the 30 EMA is your best friend when it comes to crypto. Let's take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum not looking so hot in here, huh? As you can see, it was taking off for a while, but now it's beginning to kind of roll over here in here a little bit. Sheep, nothing to do there. Boy, it took off for a while. Look, it was looking great and then came right back in. Let's take a look at Bitcoin real quick. Bitcoin is just not so hot, as you can see. And there's your example of an asset losing half of, half of its value in your lifetime, right? Well, let's see. I called the bottom back here in Bitcoin, and I said I was right, but early. So, so far, I'm early. <laughs> not even right. But you can see that I would take keep an eye on this these recent lows in here and see if those hold. One thing I wanted to do tonight, I've done it before, so it's no big mystery, is you overlay Bitcoin with stocks. The S&P 500 would be a good proxy for stocks. And you're going to find that there's a very high correlation between the two. So that's a bit of a bummer. I was hoping that Bitcoin could be like a, a safe haven type of place. And you think of the dollar and all the problems that the dollar has, and you would think like something like Bitcoin would be doing a lot better, but it's not. Okay, so what is is now the thing is, and while I'm filibustering here, any crypto you want to look at, well, go ahead and shift gears. But the thing is, it's like it's kind of like uh, channeling Michael Saylor. It's kind of like you know who would want the dollar? It, it'd be better to have some Bitcoin as opposed to dollar, but. So far, that hasn't worked, at least not lately. It, it worked for a while, but not lately. And the two tend to trade in tandem. In fact, I don't know if I can do this. Um, I don't remember how to do it on the fly. I have to think through it. But there's a way I could go in. Maybe I could do it on a, well, I'm not going to do it. Just take my word for it. Let's take a look at GBTC, which is not the best proxy in the world for Bitcoin, but it's something to look at, right? You can see that it's headed lower as of late, and then the S&P 500 has headed lower as of late. The correlation isn't, isn't as perfect as it used to be. Anyway, there's the 50, as we've been talking about quite a bit tonight. Sort of an opening gap reversal, but not really. 
Let's see if we got the spiders in here. Somebody was talking about Fib. I'm not a big fan of Fibonacci. I was trying to see what they were saying. They said we were at the 618. I don't see it, but I don't know what these exact lines are. I don't I don't understand why Fibonacci works. Now I did have a pattern years ago, and it's still a valid pattern called the gatekeeper. And it's uh it's based on a seven eight six retracement, but this is something that I eyeball and don't measure, and I can explain to you the psychology behind the pattern and why it works. It, it, it's nothing magical about the Fibonacci in it. But anyway, it's so funny. I wanted to take this out before tonight. I forgot because <laughs> I was trying to see that somebody in the group was talking about it. I'm just not a bad, big fan of Fibonacci. You know, one of my beefs is that the Fibonacci people draw so many damn lines on the chart. Sooner or later, the market's going to reverse at one of them. Then they go, yeah, you see? But just be careful in general right now. We are still oversold and we could bounce, but I wouldn't I wouldn't go too crazy unless you're trading intraday on the S&P 500. NASDAQ Composite, as you can see, well below the 50, but did bounce off its worst levels today. And of course, watch the old lows and all of these indices. The Rusty, like I said earlier, down about a percent today, but well off its worst levels. The Rusty was doing so good. Look at that nice persistent trend. And then it, it made it almost through all this overhead supply and then it rolled back over. Energies on a relative strength basis, one of the stronger areas. You can see big rally there, just pulling back lately. My only problem is when a market makes a bottom at a top, as I've been saying quite a bit in the trading service, by the time it gets all the way back to the old highs, it's very overbought. So I'd be a little concerned about buying the energies, but they are a stronger area. A lot of areas, there's financials, look like the market itself. Some areas have been doing a little worse in the market, such as drugs, although they did a nice little bounce today. Biotechnology sort of looks like the market itself. And it also had a decent day today. Let's take a look at transports. Again, kind of looks like the market itself. So there's not a whole lot of standouts. Software, same sort of action going on there. Semi's a little bit weaker than the market. If the semis can hold these levels, then maybe they're back to the bottoming out. But on all of these sectors and indices, if they obviously take out the old lows, then all bets are off and they're in a lot of trouble. All right, any individual stocks you guys want to look at? I know we talk about stocks all day in the group, so anything we take a look at? Let me just punch up something real quick. What was that stock? D-K-N-G. DraftKings was one that I recommended, and... It just didn't trigger, didn't trigger, didn't trigger, didn't trigger, and it pulled back quite a bit. And one of you guys, I think it was, um, was it Roger, was talking about the fact that in his research, pullbacks that trigger quicker rather than later, or sooner rather than later, so let's say in this two or three bars down, all of a sudden took off again, make for better setups. And I, and I believe that conceptually that makes sense as I, replied back something like a TKO, like a one day TKO as opposed to a TKO within a pullback in day five or day six, okay? But like if you got a brand new high and you got a trend knockout move, TKO is a sharp sell off. Like imagine this bar was much bigger and then one bar off the high. Those type of moves tend, especially when the, when the market turns right back around and goes straight up and when they trigger, the market often can just snap straight back up. So that's the same kind of theory that he was discussing and and i agree with him on that sooner rather than later okay clfd long cl fd is that the utility yeah that's a good example of like a, a tko i thought i had this one in landry list so that's a tko and like i just said imagine if this bar was right after this all-time high I'm i'm okay with this george i did see this earlier i don't know if i took it out of the landry list or not, but it looks okay. But my concern is you're buying perfection 
at these high levels. This thing is going up forever, okay? If the overall market was begging out new highs with vigor, then by all means go after something like this, but I'm concerned something like this is priced for perfection, okay? And what I mean is as soon as a company begins to stumble a little bit, it's going to implode, and that might be the beginnings of what we're seeing now. Now, with that said, I think it might be worth a shot if if you really, really, really want to trade. But for me, I'm going to pass because, again, I think it's priced for, for, for perfection. And it's kind of like the only stock out there that's doing pretty good. You know, it's like I, I'd like to see 50 of these that look just like this and then go after the top few that I really, really like. So. Uh, no, the pullback's not too deep. You know, look at the magnitude of this run in here, George. So that went from, so that's what, 100% run, 150% run, 150% run, 150 run. So yeah, you want to see a deep, a deep pullback. Database has been sucking. I agree. So when the database sucks, and what's the land your list right now? Like four or five stocks, and, and you you could hear me talking tonight, like, eh, you know, <laughs> don't trade, okay? When it's like that. So Ver, for instance, another case of pullback too deep or not. Well, let's take a look at this. So this thing ran up really quickly. Is that right? 200%? Wow, look at that. 250%. And then it had a really, 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 really deep pullback. Well, you want to see a lot of people knocked out of the market. You want to see a deep pullback and something that takes off like that, okay? Now we didn't put on a lot of shares of this. I think only like 300 per 100K or something small like that. But so far so good, knock on wood. But it's you can't watch this one. You can't watch this one at all. You can't watch it during the day because like, yeah, I'm up two points. Oh, I'm down four points. <laughs> well, look at the HV, 110. Okay, that's borderline ludicrous. Uh, no, I don't think so, Jeff. He wants to know verb is. He wants to know if verb is worthy of an ad. No, I don't think so. Um, it's just not set up perfectly. The only thing I really like about it is on a relative strength basis, it's doing really well, at least from a chart perspective. Now, don't me don't measure all the zigs and zags like, but Dave, it's down 10% and the s and down X percent. It, that's not what I mean. Relative to, to itself and in general, it's doing pretty good and depends on what you want to measure. But like, even if you just measure from there to there, that's what's sixteen percent higher. Okay, so no, I, I don't think I would add on to that one. Just enjoy the ride for now. Okay, anything else? Well, while we're in impasse, I want to thank everybody for watching tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. If you want to join me live? Love to have you. DaveLearner.com slash webinar. Register again, even if the link is old, which it probably is. I don't think I've updated it in quite some time. Maybe you need to just take the date out and put every Thursday. Yay. <laughs> if we don't talk, oh, you're welcome, George. If we don't talk between now and then, everybody have a great weekend. I'll see the rest of you guys and girls in Facebook tomorrow. Everybody, again, have a great weekend. I think it's uh, is it Memorial Day weekend or no, it's Labor Day weekend. Everybody have a great weekend, uh, extended weekend. Have fun out there. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. And may the trend be with you.